How's it going, Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week, Cicada. I know you guys have been asking for this for a while, but we're going to review the T500 still, and uh, I thought I thought I could bring in a little help. So, hey, man, is that a coffee maker? <laughs> crab cooker. Crab cooker. Cool. Welcome to Still It everyone, I'm Jesse and this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. We've got two guests today guys, I don't think either of these guys need any int oh. intro whatsoever. <laughs> uh, but just in case, George from Bali and Hops and Bearded and Board from... Bearded and Board. Yeah. Just happy to be here. I'll tell you, yeah. all there is to it. It is yep. a pleasure, man. It absolute is an absolute pleasure. pleasure. To yeah. finally get uh, the right. three of us together. Oh! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if by any chance you haven't checked out either of these guys' channels, I thoroughly recommend you do it right now. There will be links in the description down below. Uh, George is pretty much solely homebrewing and distilling. A little of both. Mostly yeah. distilling these days. I Mostly guess, distilling it? these days, yeah, because that's sort of like the, the community's headed in that direction. Yeah. Bearded, of course, from Bearded and Board. Uh, he does a little bit of home thingies with malting and the fermenting and the tasting. Uh, yeah, but, but takes bunch it to of, the next level. He does, know, yeah. He really does. Stop describing me. What we do want to do today is go through the T500, and I know this is a really, really attractive model for a lot of new distillers so we wanted to to talk through the things we like about this thing together mm -hmm. um, and then there's a few things that you should probably know about it before you buy it uh, but I think you can kind of get past those with a few modifications so gosh yeah I've run them several times I own three of them yeah um, actually um, you know what before we get too into the weeds let's do yeah. this first let's talk about the boiler first okay make it a little easier on ourselves mm -hmm. so a couple of the things that I found about the boiler, besides being, it, it's really resilient. If that thermistor goes, I call it a thermistor, it's a resistor that's in the bottom of this thing. Right. You only take these screws out. And so if you, if you plug it in, turn it on, and, and all of a sudden it just quit working, that's because that thing burned out. And it is an, it's, it's, a, it's a closed position switch that opens up when it gets to 125 right. degrees Celsius. And once that burns out, it's real, it's a real, it's a small, looks like a, a nickel. They're yep. real easy to replace. So that's usually your problem. So don't get a new boiler. Just take the bottom off and you'll see it sitting in there. So it's a, it's a, it's a, a two wire. A safety it's feature. A, it's a safety that's feature easy that shuts remove, it off. Cool. Right. The yeah. thing that, the thing that I really dig about this is that it doesn't have an exposed element, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. true. which helps you out in a lot of situations. Absolutely. Right? What you know, I think you, is the bottom plate on that? Is it just I, normal? Yeah. Like I don't think it's that. It yeah. really limits the, the possibilities of scorching. That, that's exactly where I was going with yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's not, it's not a, a perfect solution for it. It's not, um, there's not an oil reservoir down there. It, like you say, it's not a big thick or sort like of heat sink steel plate or, or something. Yeah, but it, it goes a long way. At least you're not going to get a chunk of corn or grain or something stuck in between your elements yeah, and, exactly. and scorch. So, I mean, that was the, the main thing I wanted to point out with this. The other thing is that it's just so freaking easy to, <laughs> to mobile and easy to move around, um, which is great. Uh, we'll come back to this in a, is there anything else you want to say on the no, positive side? No, no, really, you know, the clamps that clamp too. down the lid are effective. They, you know, everything, believe it or not, it does what it, it advertises to do. Yeah. That's yeah. what is really important. Yeah. Bearded had a great point. Carry on, sir. It looks like it's really easy to clean, especially because it's so light. Um, for something like this, you're better half will probably yell at you but you know just take it to the bathtub or the shower and clean it out there because it's never going to fit your sink but it's light enough that it's not going to damage anything. I uh, took my hat off because I was literally going to say I could fit my head in it. So. <laughs> yeah which is easy because you know quite often we're in trying to clean things through a two inch port or something yeah you know? um, so that's good as well. Uh, let's put that aside for a second I do want to come back to it but let's get on to the actual still itself which is probably what you guys are interested in. And I think the first thing to mention is that it does just sit directly on top of that boiler. Hmm. So it have no muss, no fuss. No muss, no fuss. Is there like a gasket in there? Yeah, yeah. it is a gasket. Absolutely. We're going to get back to that later. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump ahead. Yeah. Uh, so this is a reflux still, guys. Let's get that out of the way really quickly. We should have said that up front. It mm -hmm. is a reflux still, uh, and really its wheelhouse is going to be creating high ABV spirits. Right. Okay. Right. It's going to strip all your flavor. Oh, yeah. Bottom line. Yeah. Now, don't let that entirely put you off if you want to do other things too, because you can 
detune these things. We, yeah, we know how to do that. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll probably talk about that later on. Yeah, it's, it's still not... I would prefer something else if I was... If I, for me, I, this is not what I would buy because I like whiskey. Right. There's better tools for the job, right? If you're looking for gin, vodka, uh, neutral spirit, you know, uh -huh. it, this is it. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So I agree with that. And this is obviously the copper model as well, which is a little bit more expensive. But hey, we like copper. Love copper. A lot of people live on, you know, live, live by the idea that you, you have to have copper. It, it, oh, by the way, uh, the stainless steel column has a copper torpedo in it. So you still get you still copper. got the copper there. But copper. Uh, so yeah, some people just like the, the, the copper. Yeah. I mean, it's beautiful. It, it, looks, beautiful. it looks good, right? Like I prefer the look of this than stainless yeah. for oh, yeah. this model especially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so in terms of operation, the thing is really easy to use. All you need, to, you, you're controlling, you don't control the heat, you just turn it on, essentially. What you do control is the reflux condenser, essentially through the, the, the tap that's supplying. Right, right. The, the, the needle thing. valve. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you're running water through the product condenser as well. So in terms of operation, there's not a lot to learn, there's not a lot of things to go wrong, which is really nice for beginners, right? Mm -hmm. It's nice to have yeah, something yeah. like that that's just unintimidating, it's easy and to pick up, easy to use. Well, one thing to keep in mind though, because the way it's designed, it's designed backwards actually, if you think about it, from a traditional, any kind of a traditional mm -hmm. still, where you're controlling the temperature to adjust the product coming out. Where in this case, you're controlling the water flow uh, and the temperature of the exit water in order to control the flow on the output. It's it's kind of so you're not messing with the heat, as you said. Yeah, you, you don't have any control of the heat. Yeah, but you have control of the water flow, which is critical. I, I think that probably segues into a few of the, the uh, issues that I know I have with this model, and I think I think you guys are on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the first thing is that control of the, the water. Yeah. If you're just hooking it up to your your kitchen tap or your garden hose. And that'll work. It, it'll work, 100% work. Like, don't get me wrong, yeah. this, this isn't a deal breaker. All right. But if you want to do fine tuning yeah. and really get this thing dialed in, you're gonna have to have a pressure limiter or a, what are they called, the gravity systems? Well, we just have a reservoir sitting up top. Yeah, you know there, there's yeah, actually yeah, yeah. a water no, no, control, no. Water, water flow control module. And I mean, the same company, but they, they sell them for like they 85 that bucks. Yeah. And what it does is, is it collect, you know, you fill it, it you hook it to the tap and you know, it fills with water about, oh, about two quarts, but it pumps out at a, a steady pressure oh, because right. otherwise, you know, if you hook this up to the sink and then somebody goes and flushes his toilet, this thing is so sensitive, it'll pick that up, that adjustment, wow. because the water flow changes. Wow. And then all of a sudden your temperature starts to go up and then you're back adjusting it. And when it all settles out, now your temperature's on the other end. So, yeah. you, you, so yeah. you're going back and forth. So. A water control module is really helpful if you're using this. I, I think that would be the first thing I would. Pick or, up. the rule in the house is when Dad turns it on, nobody uses water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, and and I mean, of course, you can buy a, a, a system. Yeah. Like you just described, George. Or there's there's ways that you can DIY a solution. Exactly. You know, grab something gravity feed will do the trick for you. Yeah. Uh, what that's, about um, like an aquarium pump? Actually, I got a, I have a video on making a water control module mm -hmm. for yourself, mm -hmm. and I use a cereal, a plastic cereal box with yeah. a small pump, and a valve, an in-out valve that shuts off when the water level gets to the right. There. So it's the same thing, but it's, it costs you about a eh, total of fifteen bucks. Yeah, in an hour. In an hour of messing around. Together. Yeah, yeah. messing around. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real simple thing. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you can do that, and that works really well because all that is is just. A, I get a DYI model of their mm -hmm. eighty-five dollar version. The next <laughs> issue that that has been brought to my attention, and I agree, is that it is a very short column. Yeah. To be yeah. creating neutral spirits. It's, yeah. Uh, it's not a. It's not ideal. I mean, it gets the job done, and it will get you started. If, however, you want to really chase that high ABV product, yeah. Just be aware of it. Moving up the the system to this. Now. I know this is a it's a bit of a hot topic and people go back and forth. I just want to point it out. Mm. Silicon hose. And that's not PTFE gasket. Uh, there's plenty of information out there on that guys. I I don't think we need to go into that now. No. But I just want you to know you can make your own choice on that one, right? Coming down the other side of that hose, we've got the little product condenser and uh, do you wanna show us? Oh. Right, another condenser? Sorry, I kind of 
tuned out for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's still coming into frame. Yay. Yep, there it is. <laughs> that's, that's a condenser, I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. About. This yeah. might be a little bit overkill. Yeah. Especially for this. For a, <laughs> yeah, for this it definitely would be. For a five yeah. steel, this is probably overkill. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, but it's I, a, this would be a very efficient Liebig condenser on... I mean, I, I would put this on anything upper to a 20 gallon still. I, yeah. It would, well, like I it said, would work. A little overkill. I mean, that that would, I'm guessing that would knock down four kilowatts. Easy. Probably. Power. Easily. Yeah. Probably. I don't know. I made it in my garage in the middle of the night. And uh, <laughs> under cover of moonlight. <laughs> well, I couldn't find my tape measure. I had, oh. I had a ruler. <laughs> so I was like, hmm? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. You did good, Beard. You did good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it, he's. It's good work, man. It looks really good. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah. I know he did so he pulled some trickery to make it look nice <laughs> after the fact, but still, it's good. <laughs> really, in my mind, the only limiting factor for a tiny little condenser like this, on a still this size, is if you want to do stripping runs. If you want to crank this thing hard, fast, and strip, you may not be able to knock everything down. Yeah. yeah. Which leads into the last point I want to talk about, which uh, George has already talked about, is the fact that this is not temperature controlled at all. It's on. It's off. Uh, fortunately for us, it is not a digital unit. So yep. what can you stick on the end of that, George? Yep. You can stick it almost anywhere. You could stick it into a PID. <laughs> That's where I was going, yeah. You could do a PID, um, or my choice would be a voltage regulator on something like this. Or just... a pulse width modulator, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Something real good. simple. Yeah. Something real simple, off the shelf. <laughs> 50%, 100% power. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I really think that that would be a huge addition to the system, especially when you want to detune this thing and run it as a pot still. Uh, when you're running in reflux, like we talked about before, uh, it, in some ways it's much more important to be able to control the reflux ratio than the power for a reflux still. Mm -hmm. um, having control of the power would still be nice, but if you're running it as a pot still, the only control you've got over the, the unit is how much energy you're putting into the boiler. Exactly. And you got none of that on this thing. So, right. Yeah. That, and, you know, I did a video on making a brandy out of one of these. And uh -huh. it, it turned out really good. What, what I had to do was I, I removed all the packing mm -hmm. from inside the column and just used the column. And I ran it as I would a pot still at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a lot of success with it. But still, it's a little bit, it's a little bit pernickety. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah. it is what it is. Uh, but, I mean, is it a good still? Absolutely. Yeah. Especially right out of the box. I mean, for chance, you wanted to go to Home Depot and Walmart and get everything that you need to. You wouldn't put go to together. Home Depot or Walmart because that would be in America. Yeah. Well, right. If you wanted to go to Mitre Tedden <laughs> or Bunnings in New Zealand, <laughs> or order something online, yeah, um, order this... all your parts online and build it yourself, you're not going to build anything that's um, as reliable. I don't think sure. unless unless you know. If you've got yourself. skills, you got some skills, yeah, transfer. But if you're just some knucklehead who doesn't, you know, build stuff for a living. This is a really good option because it's just take it out of the box, clean it, and run it. Yeah, I like tinkering. Yeah, I do too. And and don't get me wrong, guys. The I I would put my CCVM against this any day of the week to make anything you could possibly make under the under the sun. Mm. I would back my CCVM every time a coconut. But that took me literally almost a year to get that thing yeah. put together because mm -hmm. I had to find parts. I didn't have a lot of money to get it together. I needed to acquire skills. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a long process. This is a one shot. Yeah. 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 The other thing is I've seen guys modify this. So I've seen guys, once they've, they've used this for a little while, we talked about this earlier, sort of starting with something relatively modest, getting mm -hmm. into the hobby. And that's what this is. Um, you know, if you wanted to make a couple of little adjustments to it, like the, the water modulator, for yeah. want of a better yeah. word, and the, um, the power modulator, once again, for want of a better word, um, run it for a little while, and I've seen guys then strip this off and put their own column on top of the boiler, mm -hmm. just because it's easy. So at the end of the day, it's not, it's not a perfect still. I don't think I don't think it was designed to be a perfect no, still. Yeah. No, it's but, designed it, to be accessible. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and it definitely excels at that. For being a tabletop model that you don't have to have a stove, you don't have to have gas, mm -hmm. you don't have to have a special outlet for it or anything. I think it works pretty good. Yeah. But um, yeah, you just gotta. There's a lot to consider when you're buying a still. What do you want to make? Number one, how much, much do you want to make? Yeah. yeah. And how much do you want to spend on the still? And how much yeah. do you have to spend? Yeah. And how much time do you have? Right. <laughs> you about ready? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. So I think uh, I think that wraps it up really well. Thanks a bunch to these guys. Oh.
Anytime. Definitely check the yeah. channels if you haven't already. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button down below. We are out of here. We got other things to do. Chase the craft. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keep on chasing the craft, guys. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Love see it. See ya. Love it. I gotta go. Thank you, team. I'm gonna go see what I am starving. I'm gonna make some sandwiches.